the 2014 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine with one half to Professor John O'Keefe and the other half jointly to Professors Mybrit Moser and Edward Moser for their discoveries of cells that constitute a positioning system in the brain. And this year's laureates have discovered a positioning system, an inner GPS in the brain that helps us locate our place in space and helps us navigate our environment. During the press conference, I got this impression that the audience was a bit surprised over this choice. Why is that? Well, these discoveries don't come out of the blue. It was already in the late 1960s and early 1970s that John O'Keefe made his seminal discovery of the place cells. And 30 years later, the Mosers discovered, in 2005, discovered the grid cells. So people working in the field and the broader area of science have been aware of these discoveries for some time and aware of the paradigm shifting nature of their work. So I don't know that it's such a surprise. As you're well aware, the, the will of Alfred Nobel stated that the prizes should be awarded to those who have conferred the greatest benefit on mankind. So how does this prize fulfill this criterion? Right. So that is true for all of the Nobel Prizes. And questions about how we are in the world, how we move in the world, how we process this information has been a subject for philosophers and psychologists, behavioralists, and experimentalists for centuries. So now we have some evidence for a network in the brain that allows us to and understand our space in the world and how we navigate our environment. So I think that's a pretty big benefit to mankind. We know much, much more about how we are in the world. This prize is supposed to be for physiology or medicine. Which one would you say is more applicable here? This is a prize for basic physiology in a field of neurophysiology. So we're not on the medical side yet, but really on the basic fundamental physiology. And what are the key breakthroughs that make these laureates worthy of the Nobel Prize? Well, there's really two parts to this. So the first is the discovery by John O'Keefe of the place cells. And that happened in the early 70s. And he did some really remarkable experiments. He was studying the behavior of rats moving freely in a closed environment. And he was able to put electrodes on the animals and he could study how they moved along a route. And what he observed was an activity in a region of the brain called the hippocampus. And when the animals navigated or moved through a route, these cells, these place cells, were excited. What he could find was that it wasn't just one place cell, but it was several of these place cells that worked together in a system. They were sort of navigational signposts, so to say. If you imagine a map, they're the landmarks. And then he could take the rat and he could move it to a new environment the place cells were also activated, but they were activated in different combinations, representing that new environment. Then he could take the rat, put it back in the initial environment, and the rat had a map. It had a memory, you could say, of the previous route that place cells fired in the order that they had initially. So the rat had a cognitive map of its environment. The second part of this discovery comes 30 years later, and this was by Mybrit and Edvard Moser. They were also studying the behavior of rats in a closed environment. But they made a larger field for those animals to move. They were also studying nerve cell activity in a region of the brain called the entorhinal cortex. What they found was astonishing. When these rats navigated the environment, when they moved through the env environment to forage for food, they saw an astonishing activity. And when they drew lines between the visual input of this activity, they found that this activity represented a hexagon. And they could see that it was a grid-like structure. In other words, the rats were forming a navigational platform, and this was used for moving and for judging distances. So the third part of this is that understanding that together the place cells and these grid cells work as a neural network. We have the grid cells to navigate our environment, and we have the place cells as signposts for us to help us find our way in the environment. So what 
was this recognized as a breakthrough at the time? It was astonishing, absolutely. So, um, as I mentioned, the breakthrough moments was first of all the discovery that there were place cells. That's one big discovery. The second was that these place cells worked in different combinations, but the combination was always the same when the animal was in the same environment. The third was that this grid-like structure, this navigational field, was completely unexpected. And then again, putting it together with the um, circuit between the entorhinal cortex and the hippocampus, understanding this network for us to code our information on our place in space and our navigation in that space. So how would you try to explain the importance of this prize to a young person, let's say an 11 year old full of curiosity? Well, imagine that your parents take you on a vacation during the summer, summer break, and you're going to go visit an exciting city like Stockholm. Okay. And you've never been there before. And so the first thing you do is you take a map from the hotel. And you're going to help your family find the Vasa ship. So you have landmarks on the map. It could be the city hall, it could be the concert house, it could be the palace, and the Vasa ship. Those are like your place cells because as you pass those landmarks, they recognize your place in space. The other thing you need on that map is longitude and latitude. You need to find a way to navigate to the Vasa ship in a very efficient way. And the grid cells function like that navigational chart. They help you judge your distance and help you find your way. So the remarkable thing is that we don't need to have the map in our hands. We have these maps in our brain. And so I would describe it that way. Thanks to our grid and place cells, we don't have to walk around with a map to help us find our way each time we visit a city because we have that map in our head. Now, if we turn our attention to the laureates, who are they? Well, we have John O'Keefe, and he was born in the U.S., but he's also a citizen of the United Kingdom. And we have Mybrit and Edward Moser, who are Norwegian citizens working in Trondheim. Do you know them yourself? I have never met them, but I'm very familiar with their work. I'm thinking of uh, the work of Mr. Keith. He it was like in the 60s. Do you know what he's working on now? You know, he's still an active researcher, and he still runs the lab working on technology advancements to study animal behavior and also understanding how the brain still computes its information by understanding place cells and grid cells. And Personally, what makes you so enthusiastic about, about this prize? I, I think it's really fascinating and a little story. This summer I went to visit my grandparents' cottage in northern Wisconsin. Hadn't been there in 30 years. Hadn't been there at all. I found myself at the cottage. I could find every single play, play childhood, you know, little hideout that I had when I was a kid. I could navigate the environment remarkably since I hadn't been there in 30 years. And I realized, thanks to my place and my grid cells, I was able to find my way and have a great summer holiday. So I think without these cells, we'd have a really hard time to survive. Finally. Has the Nobel Committee been able to uh, uh, get in contact with the laureates? Well, Jaron Hansen had a conversation with Mybrit Moser, and she was in a lab meeting, was able to take his call, was delighted, had to sit down, have a moment of pause, and she, of course, wanted the press release in her hand because she wanted real evidence. Her husband just stepped on an airplane to go to Munich, and he doesn't know. So he's sitting on an airplane, and all this is happening without his knowledge. John O'Keefe, we found him as well. He was at home, and he was very delighted, looking forward to coming to Stockholm in December. Thank you so much. Thanks again, Lata.